Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. This video is going to be the first of a part of a series on object oriented programming. So to start off with, let's try to understand and get an introduction into what is object oriented programming. Well as the name suggests, object oriented programming is all about creating objects. An object is a group of interrelated variables and functions. Variables can be referred to as the properties of the object, whereas the functions can be referred to as the behavior of an object. So if we were to treat, say for example, a car as an object, its properties would be its color, its model, its price and its brand. Whereas its behavior or functions for that matter would be like accelerating, gear change, braking. Similarly, if I gave you an example of a dog as an object, we could consider the properties of the dog as its weight or its name, its breed, its color, whereas its functions could be say barking, playing, eating, walking, etc. Objects provide a better and a clear structure for a program. Now let's move on to what is a class and an instance. Now a class is like a blueprint or a template of certain functions and entities. Whereas an instance is a particular realization of a class. Classes are used to create user defined data structures and define certain functions called methods within the class. Whereas instances are realizations of these classes. And uh, when we are speaking of classes and instances, classes don't contain any real data. They are just merely templates. Instances on the other hand contain real data. To think of an example of the difference between a class and an instance, think of a class like a empty form or a questionnaire. Now an empty form or a questionnaire does not have any information, but it does have a template to it. It tells you to fill in certain information and based on who is filling in the information, that information or the data on a particular form will be different. So an instance is like a filled out form with its own uh, unique set of information. That is one way of uh, treating or understanding what is a class and an instance. Now for our first example on classes, I will be taking you through a class where I've defined based on the circle object. So this class is going to define basically information about your uh, general circle such as its radius and its area. So let's go through it. Now obviously to define a class we need a keyword. Well in the case of classes we use the class keyword followed by a name for that class. So in this case my name is circle. Now after the uh, colon every every information that is part of the class has to be obviously indented as is typical for Python. Now you can see over here a bunch of def keywords followed by so something that you might not be familiar with and I will try to get you through this. So if you see here you have a def keyword followed by init and this init is uh, prefixed by a double underscore and it's suffixed by a double underscore and you can see the same thing for str and repr well this double underscore is called a dunder and any method um, these are of course methods this is a method this is a method this is a method this is a method now any method that is prefixed and suffixed by double underscores are called dunder methods um, these dunder methods are or can be thought of like predefined or built-in methods for a, any class that you define so these we have like uh, three dunder methods over here and uh, we have one user defined method that we will get to. So this first method that you see here is the init method or the initialization method. And this is invoked or called uh, whenever we create an instance of this class circle. And what we do here is basically we pass um, when we create this instance circle, uh, we are what, what happens is that we are we get an option to pass an a, a value for a what what is this uh, keyword or variable radius so if i pass so you will see me uh, later on creating an instance where um, i will be passing a value and that value is basically stored as the radius and by default the radius that will be passed when we create an instance for this uh, class is one um, the str method is basically used to return a descriptive string for the uh, the instance of um, class um, repr is not something that you have to bother with right now and uh, now get area is something that you should follow because if you see here i have not used any double underscores so this is a user de user defined method um, user defined methods are so, so methods that we define and these are like tasks that we define on our own so in my user defined method called get area i will be returning the area of the circle based on the radius that i pass to it now if you notice here, before every, um, in every method, 
I have this self keyword before any other attribute. So like this has self, this has self, even the get area has self. Now what this means, um, self is like an optional keyword that is used to improve readability of a program, first of all. And it's also the function of the self keyword is basically um, telling Python that, uh, well, any of the methods that we are invoking in this class or the instance of this class has to refer to attributes and variables within that instance of that class. So if I'm going to use get area function, I'm going to get values and attribute values and variable values based on only the current instance of um, that particular class. Self is obviously uh, optional. We don't really need it. But basically, the first attribute of any method is is basically the is basically what the me is the, is the instance that um, the method is invoked upon. So if I say self, I'm telling uh, this particular function that okay, all the value that you're going to get for uh, performing whatever task you want is going to be found in that particular instance where you have been invoked itself. Now, don't worry if all this is very confusing. Um, it, this might be in the beginning, but just try to understand that uh, this is something that we do for good practice and uh, you will understand um, when, when to use self or when not to use self as you learn about object oriented programming. So if you see here, my get area function is supposed to return the value radius times radius. Self dot radius is basically telling um, whatever value I've passed for radius for that particular instance. You can read this as radius times radius times pi as well. So uh, obviously this is pi r squared, which is the area of a particular circle. Now let me show you an example where I'm going to perform some of these functions. So if you see this first line, I have created an instance of the class circle where I've passed 2.1 for the radius of the circle. So now the value of the variable radius in this particular instance is going to be stored as 2.1. And this particular instance is going to be stored in the variable c1. Now the print c1 function invokes the str self-defined or predefined function. Now if you remember str was, it's basically used to return a particular string that describes like what the class will do. And this is something that we define on our own. In our example, str will return the uh, the string saying this is a circle with radius of and then it will return the radius that we passed. So in this case, it should say this is the circle of radius 2.1 as you can see over here. So if I execute this, you can notice this line. This is a circle with radius 2.1 and this is invoked by the print function. The print basically invokes the dunder str function, which uh, does all of this. Now in the next line, we say print c1 dot get area. So this is going to print the value of the of what what gets returned when we invoke the method get area for this particular instance c1. So obviously in this particular instance, our radius is 2.1. So the get area function should do pi times 2.1 squared. And the value is as you can see here is uh, some 13.85. So that is the area that we got. Now if we want to print a particular radius, um, we just say print c1 dot radius. So this will print the value of what is uh, what is stored in radius for the particular instance c1. Now you might notice me using a dot whenever it comes to defining a certain function or a keyword. Well, any time that we want to invoke or use a method of a particular class, we have to use the dot keyword. So we use the instance name c1 dot followed by whatever method that we want to use. So if we want to use the get area function, we say c1 dot get area. If we want to find out what is there in the radius uh, key uh, radius variable of a particular instance, we say c1 dot radius. Now before we move on, let's talk about some of the naming conventions. Class names are initial capitalized. So if our class name is, um, for example, um, like for example, if it's camel case, well, each word that is part of this class has its first letter capitalized. Variables and method names are in lower class. So if my class was called circle, we say class circle with C being in capital. Now moving on, let's talk about how we initialize or define instance variables. Now instance variables are declared within the init method. If you remember from the earlier example of circle, init is a dunder method. It's followed and it's preceded by double underscore as you can see here. Now if you see in this particular uh, case, I have again used the self keyword. And as I, I mentioned earlier, the self keyword is the first parameter of all member methods. Um, 
and it this basically binds that particular method to the particular instance itself during invocation. So every time a new circle object is created, the dot init function sets the initial state of the object by assigning the values of the object's properties. So the init function basically initializes each and every new instance of um, whatever of, of our class. So we can give init any number of parameters, but the first parameter must always be a variable called self. Now when a new class instance is created, the instance is automatically passed to the self parameter in init so that new attributes can be defined on the object. Inside the init method, the self.radius basically means that we want the value of radius based on the current instance itself. So as you can see, radius defines an instance variable radius and we're going to use the particular instance and its value uh, of for radius in our variable radius. Now instance, uh, the init, I mean the init function is not a constructor, but it is an initializer to create instance variables. The init function also will never return a value and it is optional and can be omitted if there are no instance variables. Now let's move on to um, class variables. So now, as we mentioned earlier, all the attributes that are created inside the init function are instance specific attributes and the instance uh, attributes are obviously specific to a particular instance of the class. For example, all dog objects. Now, if we have a class called dog, then all dog objects have a name and age, but the values for the name and age will vary depending on which dog we are topic talking about or basically which instance of the dog are we talking about. Now, class attributes are attributes that have the same value for all class instances. And we define a class attribute by assigning a value, a value to a variable outside of the init function. So if you look at this example over here, we have created another class called circle and we have this initializer again, where we have a class specific variable called radius, uh, which whose value will change depending on whatever we pass for that particular instance. However, if you look before the init, the init, um, init function or the initializer function, if you see here, we have another variable called shape object, which stores the uh, string circle. And this variable is going to be the same and constant for every instance of uh, the class circle. And unlike the uh, variable radius, we will not have different values depending on a particular instance. Okay, now let's talk about instantiating an object and let's see what happens when we create two different instances of the same class. So as you can see here, I've created an instance C1 for class circle and I'm going to check its ID. Well, if you see the ID is something like this. Now, if I created another instance over here called C2 and if I check its ID, well, it's something different now. So if you see each instance basically has a different memory location in our uh, memory um, and each instance is, this is how each instance is different each time we create it and they are created in different memory locations. Finally, before we conclude this topic on um, the introduction into OOP, let's talk about class methods, instance methods, and static methods. Now, class methods are um, usually declared, are, are actually declared with the um, at class method operator or decorator, as you can see here. It accepts the class as its first argument. So in this case, I am going to say, I'm going to define a class called my class. I'm going to use this at class method decorator to say that whatever follows here is going to be a class method. And I've defined a class method called hello that takes in a, um, that uses again self and a name uh, attribute. So what this does is it prints um, whatever I have uh, passed to it in the form of hello from uh, self dot name. Now what this would, this is going to do is basically it's going to give out a string saying hello from uh, name of the whatever class we have and um, whatever we pass in the attribute name. So oh, in this my particular in this case I'm going to invoke this method using the class name itself. I'm not going to use an instance name because I have no instance um, in this particular example. And since this is a class method, it can be invoked using the class name itself. So I'm going to pass Rakesh and let's see what happens when we do this. As you can see, the first print will basically um, give us the information of the class itself. It's saying that the class is um, called my class and the second print statement is basically a string saying hello from uh, the string name my class with a uh, comma and then whatever we passed initially which was Rakesh. Next is then instance methods and these are the most common types of methods. Um, these are invoked by an instance object. So we have to create an instance to actually use an instance method and it takes the instance or the keyword self as its first argument. So if I say class dot class, uh, if I define a class my class in this example um, and I'm going to define another function called hello. As you can see I have not used any decorator like at 
uh, class method. So this is going to be an instance method and it's going to be invoked by the particular instance. So in this case, it's going to print uh, hello from and it's going to basically say the name of the class again. So I create my instance called my instance one and it's an instance of this class. And then I'm going to invoke the instance method by using this dot, dot operator and the instance name. And the result will be basically this string over here, as you can see. Now, finally, we have another type of method called the static method which is declared using the add static method decorator. So a static method does not know its class and is just attached to the class for convenience. It does not depend on the state of the object and could be from a separate function of a module. A static method can be invoked via a class object or an instance object. So if you look at this example over here, I have defined a static method. Um, I've defined hello and it basically says print hello world. So it's going to basically just print this. So if you can see here, I've created my instance and I'm going to say dot hello. It should basically be print, print hello world. That's all. So um, the, guys, this was, um, this was it for the introduction on OOP. In our next video, we will be uh, covering the next topics of OOP and we will be starting with inheritance in our next video. Um, so I hope to see you in the next video and I hope you learned something from this. Thank you and I hope to see you again.